So as you can see on this little table that we bought cheap at an antique store, uh, the veneer was chipping and Randy went ahead and chipped pretty much it all off about this distance all the way around. And to camouflage that, because you know, anytime you paint something that has a different thickness, it's going to show up. So we're gonna use these molds that I just made using the Erdot dry clay. And I always like to use tight bond, quick and thick, because it's exactly what it says. It's quick to set up and it's thick, so it doesn't run like regular wood glue. And the beauty of using the clay is it's, you know, takes a while for it to dry, usually overnight. So it's still pliable and you can move it around curved surfaces like this. So I'm just gonna carefully add some painter's tape here to hold the molds in place while they dry. Now I like to squirt the glue out onto my little paint palette here and use a paint brush to actually brush the glue on. But before I do this next section, I'm gonna measure. And I'm gonna use my little Japan scraper here to cut. basement and it's time to start painting and finishing this little end table. I let these clay molds dry overnight. They look fantastic. Stuck on there very well. There's a little bit of cracking but not too much and actually as I said yesterday I rather like that look. I'm going to be doing a blended finish with it being darker on the bottom, getting lighter toward the top. And then on the very top, I'm gonna to do a very special finish using some IOD stamps that I will stamp into some thickened paint and then finish over the top after that dries and you'll see the unique finish. The coloring that I'm choosing 
is uh, inspired from the colors that I chose for the toile lamp that you may have watched in the previous video. As I'm thinking, it would look really cute on this table. And maybe I can sell them together. I remember Randy already sanded and cleaned the whole piece for me, so it's ready to start painting. Starting at the bottom of the table, I am using Heritage Traditions All-in-One Paint in Abbey. And then I'm going to work my way up about mm, 10 inches, 8, 10 inches. And then I will be adding a mix of Abby and Annie Sloan's French linen. That's what I'm doing right here. And then the straight French linen. Now you'll see in step two, the second day, that I changed that. And I'll be explaining why. The wonderful thing I love about um, this paint, this painting line, all in one paint, is that it's thick, it goes on beautifully, and it is self-leveling, which is wonderful. Okay, not using a lot of paint. And because it's thick, give a little bit of water here. And I'm gonna go up higher with my darkest color here, higher than it will actually be in the end. But I did want it higher anyway looking at it when it had dried. And now I'm using Annie Sloan's French linen and I am skipping that mix that I had made. And I'm basically just painting on a stripe right here. Without putting on any more paint in my brush, I'm using my Abbey brush. And I'm gonna go back and just blend these two together. Now, I'm actually creating a third color by doing this. That's going to help transition it with blending. I can always come back and pick up more Abby if it's getting blended too far down. All right. And now, using my oval brush that is also heritage collection, dry brush, nylon brush, I'm going to gently wipe over it in the area where the two colors are blending. And you'll need to wipe your brush off Keep it dry and free of paint. But you see how softly that blended? Now, before I go up, I'm gonna go around and do all four legs.
The first thing I have to do to get this embedded textured layer using stamps on the top of the table is to apply a pretty thick coat of paint. And the wonderful thing about using chalk paint is that it's, it's thick. So the top is French linen and you can see how thickly I am applying it. Okay, now we get to watch paint dry to a certain stage where it's starting to lose that sheen. I haven't been waiting terribly long, but I'm starting to see that the some of the edges are starting to dry. And even though the paint's pretty wet, I'd rather have some peaks that I can sand down than not get a fairly good impression. So. This technique was inspired by the two sisters of Iron Orchid Designs, and I'm using two stamps. The Kindest Regards, which is what is you're seeing right here, is a beautiful script. Now I'm just holding with one hand and gently pressing, putting some pressure with the other hand to make sure I'm getting a good impression. And then you want to lift straight up. The other stamp I'm using is the beautiful Rose Toile stamp. Same process, hold with one hand, don't let it shift. That's why you want to be careful once you place, you're committed to that placement, that location. So, um, you press gently, and then you're going to lift again. Now, this is a little easier to stamp on thick, wet paint. It doesn't slide or shift as easily as it does on a dried, flat surface. And again, I'm just covering the entire table in different areas with different sections of the stamp. I hope you can see it well enough. It's still wet here, but I'm giving you a close-up view of what it looks like. It's really going to show up in the next steps. After it dries, I will lightly sand it with a 220 grit sandpaper. Chalk paint wax is a water-based wax. So, you can clean your brushes if you do it pretty immediately. But even with that, I have a dedicated brush for waxing, just for waxing. If you're using a colored wax that is dark, you want to always clear wax first, then dark wax. The dark waxes can grab quite heavily, and then you really have to work at getting it off. The clear wax um, kind of acts as a barrier before you put your dark wax on. Also, if you get too much dark wax, you can use your clear wax like an eraser to remove it. White wax, well, um, if you're applying white wax to a chalky finish, I would probably still use the clear first just to have more control. So, I have already clear waxed and dark waxed everything from the top down. You're gonna need a soft cloth. working out of my lid first just to finish and you want to work in small sections this kind of brush is really good for waxing because it gets down into those little relief the little crevices there after you put a little on go ahead and use your soft cloth 
to rub over it. A little wax goes a long way. So you don't have to load up a ton on your brush. Time to make this come alive. 